Time to talk about the seventh annual South Shore Science Festival. It's going to be a virtual again this year, but it is coming up on a Saturday, April 24th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And uh, the uh, co-sponsors, I guess co-hosts, <laughs> if you will, Kathy Hogan and Manuel Barroso are both here to tell us all about it. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Manuel. Nice to see you both again. Hi. How are you? Hi, Joe. Yeah. Hi, you, Joe. Thank you for having us. Really sure, appreciate. sure. Pleasure. Um, it's it's always a fun event, and I know that you're both very, very uh, passionate about this. It's hard to believe it's the seventh annual, um, Kathy. Was it virtual last year also? Yeah, it was. Manuel put it together in less than a month, in just a few weeks after everything was shut down. I don't know how we did it. And how did it, how did it go? <laughs> It went very well, you know, it was thank you to also the support of, you know, several of the people that were volunteering to do the physical one, they were willing to help us to do the, the virtual one. A little topic, we had to reduce the number of uh, presenters because we only have limited time on only one channel. But it was good. They were very good. People. Actually, the thing that was a little different versus other years, other than being virtual, is that people that was, uh, they have relatives that live in other places, they were able to join. We mm -hmm. people that join from Spain, from the UK, uh, people from join, join from, uh, you know, a, a different states, even a couple of people from Canada. It was nice. You know, people from other places had the opportunity to enjoy the festival as well. Yeah, that is one benefit of all of this uh, virtual communication. Uh, it does open it up uh, to folks who might normally be able uh, to to participate in it. So I think that's a silver lining. I think it's something that's going to stay with us to some extent uh, post-pandemic um, as well for a, a lot of different activities. But maybe if we could uh, let folks know a little bit about the history of this particular event, how it all came to be. You want me to tell? Sure. Okay. Um, I joined the Quincy Center for Innovation in 2014 <clears throat> because I'm trying to get my idea launched and into practice of how to teach kids basic physics through sports and games and other other ways too and i gave a presentation at um the center for innovation shortly after i got there eric brown was one of the members there who had attended it and a few weeks later he was met somebody from the cambridge science festival and she told him that they were looking for more venues. And so he came back to me and he said, why don't we do a science festival here? And I said, I'd love to. I was hoping for some kind of collaboration by being a member here. And then um, I didn't know Manuel at the time, but Eric told him about it. And then uh, a week or so later when I met Manuel and uh, we talked about it and he was delighted to, to be a part of this. So, that's how it got started in um, 2014, actually, the, pr the, the groundwork. And actually, I've been using that um, term ground in um, my approach to what I'm trying to do, because children can learn physics from the ground up. And I mean it literally and figuratively, because you can start learning it in the playground, for example, through slides, which you learn about gravity, you learn about inclined planes. Okay, just a little example. So that's how it got started. And every year we just continue to do it. I never thought it would be something that took, that lasted this many years. I just thought of it as a one-time thing, but um, Manuel hasn't let that happen. <laughs> what did you think, Manuel, when, uh, when you first heard about it? Well, I think it was a great opportunity as well, you know, it was about the collaboration of the Innovation Center. We have a lot of people, talented people there, and also wanted to have opportunities for all the children to learn about how, how fun it is to have a STEM and science and just go and um, physically uh, learn from people that they share experiences. So we started, you know, by just having people from the Innovation Center and a couple others to, to visit us. But then as we grow, we also incorporated having other co co corporate, major corporations to come and have experts to share their expertise with the people, some innovation people. But also we have uh, some schools to have uh, through their um, science fairs that we were invited to be a judge and we invited some of them to come and share kids that were more close to the age of other kids, which is also nice when you hear from your own peers that are having fun doing science and inventions and so So they get very enthusiastic and really continue to encourage us. and. Some of those kids just by telling us when they come out of the uh, festival or during the festival, so 
thank you for having this. Now I know that I want to be a scientist. So now I want to be an engineer. So that's just very rewarding and say, well, we shouldn't stop doing that because there are more kids can have in that, we bring them that opportunity. Some of them didn't have the opportunity to visit a museum of science yet at that time, but then they get to New York Museum of Science in Boston and the Museum of Science came to one of our, couple of our festivals and then they, we gave some tickets to the people so they were able the opportunity to there. So now there's opening the eyes to take advantage of all the wonderful things that are around Queens and around Boston and Cambridge. Yeah, so what would you say is the kind of overall goal of the festival, um, you know, if you would, what is, what is its actual mission or purpose? Well, it inspired kids to, you know, to like science and also to understand that it's fun. And, you know, that is it's hands not on, fun. Hands on experiences with it. Yeah. 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 And a chance to meet people who are scientists mm -hmm. and engineers who they may not have been able to meet in, an, in another situation. So brings them face to face. Or in this case, yeah. <laughs> screen to well, screen. Screen to screen, right. <laughs> screen to screen. Well, which is still fine because you have an interaction, right? You haven't interacted. So we have had the opportunity to bring at least a, a three Nobel laureates in the past. And we're going to talk a little bit more. We have surprises for this one. But, uh, you know, just imagine you're just having a Nobel laureate to be able to talk to you and get in the same room with them and talk about your the discoveries. And a lot of kids get inspired of that. And the, the, the most wonderful things that they know that they learn is is there are regular people like any of them, like any of us. So they're just people that they dedicated and they got passion about something and they just work through their passion. They don't have to be out of this world too. Right. Curious, um, have you heard from any uh, folks who attended, you know, some of the earlier festivals um, and are they getting into science now? Is that, is that something that actually worked and, and, and inspired them to follow that as a, either a career path or a, at least an interest? Well, certainly, well, what I have learned is, you know, some kids really get to like it more. They found the fun, the fun side. And then, you know, as they choose the, you know, the things they would go to high school, they, you know, they make it easier for them to understand, you know, uh, you know, science itself or math, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they, are, they know that they can learn through games as well. And we do have kids presenting their own science fair projects. Yes. Which started a few years ago. Right. And uh, so that's another way for, for the kids themselves to be presenters, not just um, attendees. Right. That's what I was curious about. If, yeah. say, um, I don't know, say a 17-year-old attended the first science festival and now that person is 24 years old, uh, you know, is that, is that what they're pursuing uh, for, their, for their education or for their career, I wonder? So, so, some of them do. And some others actually, as, as I can see, they, some of the kids was interesting because one, there was one girl that she was coming with her older brother, sister to the festival as she was a little girl. And then as she grew up, said, I want to present now. And she came and pres mm -hmm. did some presentations. So, you know, they, they become, and, you know, and so they're really becoming into it because they were inspired by the other kids and then they work it out and say, can I present now? And they were able to present. And some kids presented also virtually last year, which was new for many of them in Zoom. They were recently successful. And we will have also some other kids this year Ma, for example, Santana School and a few other schools that will be presenting a couple of little interactive sessions as well. Giving yeah, opportunity. yeah. So they've and actually they've they're they're teaching too at the same time. They've you know, that's another uh, avenue they probably didn't anticipate themselves following was being a teacher. You know, right. as as a teacher myself, I think that's a really important <clears throat> skill to be able to have. Yes. Um, it's one thing just to show somebody how to do something, but to teach them. It takes a special skill, mm -hmm. and I think that's a great skill that would be great if it was developed in everybody to a certain extent, because everybody gets into a position where they need to, like in a job, um, to orient a new person to the job. It's nice if you can do it in the, um, like as a teacher would do it, and yes. not just do this, one, two, three, four. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and recognizing how people learn or everybody learns, uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit oh, differently. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And furthermore, when they teach or when they do the experiments and, you know, interaction sections, they learn even more, right? Because they have to prepare the materials. They have to make it in a, in a way that is fun for other kids because one right. of the objectives of all the presenters have to make it fun for the, the attendees. So they inspire the others. So, so they do, a, it's not just a science project. They have to do something to, to have other people to have fun with it. Well, that's, isn't that the scientific method? Or it's, it's you know, it's, uh, it's asking questions, right? You, you, you do something, um, you find out what happened, you ask why it happened, and, uh, and, and then, you, you know, you learn from that. 
why it worked and why didn't it work. Right. Yeah, and then you try another method, yeah. You know, the kids probably do that all the time anyways. Yes. <laughs> without realizing it. Yeah. And that's the thing is to be able to point out to them that, you know, you are a scientist in many ways and we want to show them how it is. And it gives you a new way of looking at yourself. So let's talk about this year's um, event. As I mentioned, it is uh, April 24th, uh, Saturday, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It is being held virtually over Zoom uh, due to the pandemic, but uh, it still sounds like it's going to be really, really interesting, almost out of this world. So, <laughs> so tell me what's going to be happening. So we're going to have three parts, and I'm going to let uh, also Kathy talk about those three parts. We have a part, you know, uh, for different age groups, you know, just to, they can attend the most of half in the morning from uh, 10 to 11, 30, we want to have uh, the kids that are, any kids under 10 year olds will enjoy it as, as well as their parents. There are other kids also will enjoy it, but manager, the, those age will. Then we have uh, from uh, 11, 30 to around, one, well, actually 11, 45 to uh, 1, 30, the age group of between normally 11, and 16 year old will enjoy the most. And also at that time, we'll have also kids presenting um, some activities. And then we have another, uh, the, the third session that go from uh, uh, 1.30 to 3 p.m., which also gonna have is more for more, uh, it's uh, uh, above 13 years old, all the way to adults. And we just recently added a fourth section. That fourth section, we have a, uh, a night, 7.30 p.m., and, and then it's a Nobel laureate, and, uh, Fred Do Doherty, we we're going to be, Peter Doherty will be presenting. Uh, Peter Doherty is a, uh, uh, he was, is very instrumental in identifying how our immune system works. And he is doing a, a lot of research in the vaccination for the current COVID. But actually, he's presenting from um, uh, Melbourne, Aust Australia. Australia. Really? So, yeah. And uh, this, uh, well, he's going to be 14 hours away. That, you know, having virtual give us opportunity to have, a, a, you know, that caliber of a, a person presented to this in the festival. And also, yeah, Kathy has been always wondering how we're gonna do time travel. So we're gonna also gonna do time travel. So we're gonna be presented on Sunday, 9.30 a.m. Australian time, and we're gonna be watching him here in Saturday, 7.30 p.m. Right, yeah, we're literally it's kind of a, crossing yeah. time zones, yeah. Yeah, yeah time zones, he's gonna be in the morning, he's gonna be sunshine, we're gonna be here, you know, he's gonna be looking at the sun, sunrise, we're gonna be looking at the sunset, uh -huh. and, uh, but at the same time, talking to him. Yeah, he's not only that, but uh, uh, they're going into their winter season soon, <laughs> we're coming into our spring and summer season. Oh, exactly, yeah. exactly. It, yes, and that, you know, it's, uh, that's also it's really nice, you know. What was his I, name I, again, I Manuel? I'm sorry. Sorry? His name again, I'm sorry. It's uh, Peter Doherty. Peter Dr. Doherty. Doherty, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we'll have also his link in the, in, the, in the website so people can find more about him. Wonderful, very and good. We will encourage people to read about his biography and his work. Yes, for sure. Uh, you know, and he, al he also writes <clears throat> for the general public. He doesn't just write, you know, medical articles, scientific oh, okay. articles. Yeah, so, and he has um, some kind of a blog or something that is also geared to the general public. So... He's not just a scientist for scientists. He's a scientist for, for the people. Right, breaking it down but, so everybody can understand yes. it, which yes. I think is important, yeah. yeah. And well, yeah, I know by the way, just, just something quick. Uh, uh, it was also thank you to uh, Nobel laureate's school visit with El Shapiro helping us to, to you know, the contact with him. So right, right. It was, you know, really Very, very good, yeah. So. I know, Manuel, you have um, an actually a, a visual you could show folks um, uh, of the events that day, if you could, uh, just yeah. to, so they can kind of get sure. a, an idea for how to plan out their their day, you know, when they're attending the uh, the festival. Sure. Let me just go ahead and bring it up. Sure. Visuals are always great. It's a great way to learn, right? As people learn visually. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Okay. Perfect. So, okay. So here we have a website and in the website you can click simply here uh, to uh, reserve uh, uh, your, uh, as, as you move along, it will go to the different time zones so you can about the different time frames you can reserve there, but also you can see the live schedule. Here we can see the different sessions that we will have, uh, and you can identify all the detail that is happening there. Oh, okay, behind. so you can actually choose which ones you want to attend. Right, exactly, okay. and you can reserve from there as well. 
Very good. And is there a, a cost at all to attend the festival? No, it is free. It's all free. You know, we have all the time has been free for all these seven years. Yeah. Uh, probably, you know, and then it's George probably will see a flyer like this. Uh, so we're going through, you know, the people you may know, you know, uh, through the school department that is helping us to share the, know, the news with everybody. So you can always click here or it's, you take your phone and it's scan into this, into while you watch the QA TV, and uh, you can point directly into the TV, into the QR code, and you and you will get into your phone directly. Uh, yeah, bring bring that up if you could, Manuel. It's yeah. not up just yet. Yeah, bring bring that up. Uh, yeah, and then in the phone, it put pops up. You click on your phone, and then right there in your phone it has a place to reserve. Right. Yeah, there bring in, bring that bring that bulletin board up if you could, so we can see yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So when we click here, it goes straight, and uh, now it's gonna show how you should go straight into the. This is what you see in your phone. You would click directly to make a reservation. Yes. You reserve there, and then you can select that or any of the other time frames. Okay. Yes. Very simple. I think by this time, I think everybody's also familiar with Eventbrite. Oh, sure, yeah. And do you have that flyer with the actual QR code uh, that you could show folks as well? Uh, yes. yes. Uh, let me uh, put it up. Yeah. 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 QR code. Uh, this is the one that you... There we go. There it is. Yeah, so you can just scan into it and yeah. we can also, we, that will be available in there. You go to our website, it's very easy, southshorescience.online. Very simple and easy to, easy to access. And, mm -hmm. and we're all getting so uh, uh, savvy now with all, <laughs> all of our virtual communications that it should be no problem. Last year, I didn't have a, a camera in my computer and the only camera that I had was in my phone and the only way I was able to manage it was by getting, putting it on the end of my piano. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. So we've come, we've come a long way in a short really, time. It, yeah. Really, you have. <laughs> so, uh, Kathleen, tell me a little bit about how NASA is going to be represented at this year's science festival. Right. Well, it started uh, when I read about two or three years ago an article in the Patriot Ledger about... Dr. Fred Califf III, and how he is the chief map maker for, for NASA's Mars project at the Jet Propulsion Lab. And <clears throat> he's from Quincy, graduated from Quincy High School, 1987. Um, and he named two places on Mars Gale Crater for his hometown. There's a Quincy Mars, and there's a Squantum Mars. And Who'd have ever thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to be at the festival, yes? Yeah. So I, this year I decided, why don't I see if I could get him to be a speaker? And um, he accepted right away. He was delighted to do it. So, um, and Manuel and I met with him on a Zoom meeting about a month ago <clears throat> and got to know him a little bit and tell them more about what the festival is like and so forth. Yeah, and do you know, will he be actually able to show pictures of, uh, of Quincy and Squantum Mars? <laughs> I, I hope so, I okay. hope so. Um, I've been in touch with somebody else who works for NASA um, on the East Coast, he's on the West Coast, <clears throat> and she has DC Science Comedy, and um, her name is Kasia Patel, and she's gonna interview him. And she has made a 3D rover and um, I asked her to, uh, if she could display that. And so that's, that's one thing. And I also suggested if there was a globe of Mars, like we have a globe of the Earth, that would be nice to be able to display that. So um, I don't know exactly what, what will be shown, but I'm hoping there will be, you know. Yeah, and he, will, he got some little, you know, samples that he will show, little samples there. Yeah, again, uh, visuals, you know, it's a great way uh, to learn, especially for younger, younger kids, uh, I am sure. But do you encourage, uh, uh, you know, parents to join their kids when they, uh, when they uh, take part in the festival? Absolutely. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, because one of the key things, one other thing is probably we are talking in the past, that is, it's great for the kids to learn how to have fun with science, but it's, more, it's also as important that the parents play with them. So because mm -hmm. as a kid, it's always nice when your father is or your mother is work explained with you and you involve science and games and so on. It becomes really something that you really start enjoying. Yes. Because it's, you know, if you're playing, your dad is having a time to play with you. Yeah. It's like having that time, uh, you know, and when you're learning, you're playing. And I, I think that the best teacher 
having this, I will always picture that in my mind, is a tri- you have a successful kid, you, it's always a triangle. You need a kid, you need a parent, and you need a teacher. You know, try, you know, so those three need is it's not like if I put my kid on the school, he's going to learn everything. If I try to teach him, he's going to learn everything. It's always yes. a combination of the three that really make a successful kid. Yeah, yeah. So you do want folks to, uh, to register beforehand, is that right, uh, to take part in the festival? Yes, okay. yes, we have limited capacity, but you know, oh. it, it's a little bit quick, but uh, you know, yes, it registered. The, well, we're going to be two ways. They register and they will be able to interact and have access to do Q&A. Everybody who comes a little late, they will be able to access that to our YouTube channel. So we're not, in the YouTube channel, going to be broadcasted live as well. Okay. So they, it, for whatever reason, they come late and then they will be able, still will be able to see that via the YouTube channel. Okay. They just won't be able to interact, but they can still watch it. Yes. Okay, uh, and again, SouthshoreScience.online is the, uh, the website uh, to go to. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to add about Fred Califf. Uh, he grew up in Southwest Quincy. He went to the Lincoln Hancock School mm-hmm. and to Sterling uh, Middle School. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so um, he said he grew up around Liberty and Center Streets. So anybody from that particular area you know, why I take a special interest in somebody from their neighborhood who has been so successful. And he told us that there was a quarry not far from where he lived. And he was very, became very interested in the stones and the rocks. <clears throat> and his grandfather used to, um, was interested in rocks too. And this interest developed as a child just in his neighborhood. How about that? And now he's a yeah, I know. scientist. And, yeah. yeah, and he also went to UMass Boston, where he majored in either geology or earth, earth science. Again, uh, the formative years are the most important. So you don't, you never know, but what it will lead to down the line. But um, right. yeah, they're, they're very important for sure. I yeah. better come back to that time. You know, the fact that he enjoyed that time with his grandfather about rocks and learning that, spending the time that becomes his inspiration to become a scientist. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right, again, it is the South Shore uh, Science Festival, 7th South Shore Science Festival, Saturday, April 24th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And uh, southshorescience.online is the place to go to get all the information. Uh, Kathy Manuel, anything else we should, uh, we should yes, add right now? Yes, yeah. sure, sure. yes. Uh, the mayor is issuing a proclamation of April 24th as Dr. Fred Caleb the third day ah. in Quincy. Okay. Yeah, and um, Councilor Harris is going to <clears throat> be helping with reading the proclamation to Fred Califf. So um, wanted to make sure everybody is aware of that. And Fred honored his city, Quincy, by naming parts of, of Mars for it. And so this is a chance for Quincy to honor Fred Califf for doing that, for recognizing this hometown. So... Um, you know, everybody should be proud of him for, for what he did. Yeah, and it's most important, you know, that's another ex- example of how a kid, you know, with a, having a good time can go all the way out of this world, all the way to the next planet. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We've got interstellar now. <laughs> yeah, interstellar from, now. From, now. Quincy, from Quincy Mass to Quincy Mars. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, of course, yeah. the uh, you know the, the postage to get a letter that far <laughs> would be scarcely expensive. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and just uh, a couple other things just to mention is that so we have both scientific also telling us you know some uh, you know entertaining activities and uh, telling stories how they help to save lives with them uh, uh, you know medical instruments we're going to have a uh, with positive ACS helping to tell uh, how fun it is to be an engineer and why you all have the fun and I'm going to get let um, Kathy they talk a little bit about what happened in the morning it's a lot of uh, great stories for children in the right. in the first session uh, right. Kathy. We're going to start with a, a story that will appeal to the youngest children. Mm-hmm. Um, it has to do with colors. And <clears throat> then we're going to be talking about the color that comes from the sun, from light. And how when it enters um, a plant, the chlorophyll in the plant, the, the plant starts manufacturing sugar and starches. Which photosynthesis, is, right? I remember Photosynthesis, that. yes, yes. And which is food, basically it's just food out of light. And it's pretty amazing when you think about it. <clears throat> the, um, this is going to be, this part will be shared with me by Mary Flowers, who was an artist. 
And then we're going to have a storyteller, Judith Black, telling stories to do with trees. The Quincy Tree Alliance, Quincy Council, uh, Quincy Climate Action Network, mm -hmm. um, Joe Murphy, Faith yep. Strickler, and Cindy C. are going to do a lot of things showing us various things about trees, including some footage from the Arboretum. Oh. Yeah, they're going to be reading the Lorax, which is about oh. being protective of trees. Yes. And uh, we also have Masha and the Positrons, and she's going to be doing songs to do with science. Okay. And yeah, so <clears throat> we have a lot of things going on. And, and this is also in uh, recognition of Earth Day, because Earth Day is a couple of days before the festival. That's right. Yeah, the 22nd, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. And good. the kids from San Agata School will be presenting activities uh, well, for, uh, honoring Earth Day. So. Very good. All right. Anything else we should and, yeah, and Peter Dar and and um, Dr. Peter Doherty, who is going to be appearing at seven thirty. Mm -hmm. He's the one from Australia, and he, he is very timely because of this pandemic. In fact, he wrote a book in twenty twelve about pandemics mm -hmm. and how we needed to be aware of the possibility of pandemics. So he is a very timely person. Um, to have as part of our festival. Yeah, that sounds like something everybody would yes. uh, get something yes. from for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, oh, and one more thing. Yes. Yes, my assistant <clears throat> just <laughs> passed me a reminder. I am curious to find out from K Fred Califf if he chose to name um, Squantum Squantum because of the Harvard Air Meet that was held there in the early part of the 20th century oh, in which gorgeous. Amelia Earhart and various other early um, aviators. So I'm wondering, because of that was, you know, mm -hmm. the birth of aviation. So that's why I'm wondering if that's why he chose um, Squantum as the other name. Yeah, I'd be curious we, to hear what he says. That. That's not yeah. where he was from. Yeah. Right, right. Everybody will discover that in the science festival. That's yes. right. You'll have to you'll have to tune in and see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you both. Really appreciate it. This sounds like it's going to be an, another great event, uh, virtually or not. So uh, I think you've got a great program put together, and I think a lot of folks will enjoy it. Yeah, we greatly support. You know, appreciate your time, Joe. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure. All right. Have a good have a good festival again this year. Take care. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Joe. You're welcome.